versatile, they are dedicated. They are true professionals. They're New Zealand firefighters. With a volunteer... It's Peter's diplomacy skills being tested this time, not his firefighting abilities. But all calls are answered, even if they muck your day up. I'm missing my PT. I haven't had my PT. I haven't had my <laughs> cup of tea. I haven't had my lunch. Well, actually, I did. I had a banana for lunch. After each call out, they have to make sure they're completely prepared for the next one. Get it? Just don't want to uh, go to a job and then you find, find that you need gas. <laughs> And you have to ring up Firecom and it look pretty, uh, I don't think it's happened yet, but, but we don't want to be the first station to do it. Hey, Morgz. Don't want to be the first truck to uh, run Another out of guess. gas on the, way, on the way to a job. Especially at a job anyway. <laughs> yeah, Morgan and I, we were both in the Navy together and uh, I was Morgz's, uh, Morgan's boss. And then uh, 11 years down the track, I uh, joined the fire service and uh, find out Morgan's my supervisor now, which is good. It's good because I think I treated him right and uh, yeah, looked after him. So hopefully he'll, he'll uh, reciprocate and, uh, and look after me. Pretty soon the next call out comes in. In the middle of lunchtime, a fire has broken out at a pizzeria restaurant in nearby Newmarket. The situation seems calm, but the manager's worried. I uh, saw a little bit of smoke billowing out of a pipe, uh, didn't know what to think, then, then it turned to flames and so I decided to ring the fire department. The firefighters don't yet know what they're facing. What's happening is that we've got a, uh, a multiple occupancy building, as you can see it's a bit of a rabbit warren, three or four occupancies covered, and we've got a um, ducting fan or a ducting system that's probably has ignited. Is, yeah, is it pretty warm? Yeah. Remy where a blue watch is responding to a small blaze in a pizzeria. The fire started in a ventilator duct and it's difficult yeah, to assess its status. Is there? Fires don't need lots of flames to be dangerous. This one appears to have burned out. But if a hotspot flares up, this building could become an inferno within minutes. How are we going to put it out? Maybe a jug of water? A jug of water. Yes, Thank you very much. A fire that can be doused with a jug of water may not seem like much. But in a busy restaurant, lives could be at risk if a little blaze like this reignites. This ducting is from an open pizza cooking facility. And what happens is you get a build up of grease and fat and so forth, and then one day it's had enough and it says, I'm going to catch fire. You got flame. No, oh no, no, you've got to ring us up yeah. to give us a bit of a run. Um, Plus the, if, you don't, if you don't report it, you get yourself in the, bot, in the uh, gun, you know. Yeah. I like your trousers. And the, the That's that old gun coming out of there. Yeah. It's actually burnt itself out, essentially. There was one or two little hot spots we put out with a bit of water. So that's what the mess is there. Not very, uh, not very nice to look at, but that's the sort of mess that happens. Blue Watch gets a chance to head back to Remuera Station. It's downtime for admin and a gear check. Peter's reports on the morning's call-outs will go into a national database of statistics. Harry the Rookie keeps alive an old habit from his Navy days. At the level I was, you know, I, I had to sort of uh, set the standards for the guys, make sure that, the, that their shoes and their uh, boots and it were, were uh, polished. Um, and if I didn't do it, then, you know, then I couldn't go around telling them that I you know, polish their boots and shoes when I don't even do it. Harry's boots don't get that extra bit of polish. There's a car fire on Auckland's southern motorway. What we've got here is a um, car on fire northbound. It may be just a vehicle engine that's got too hot. Many call-outs on the motorway are cars that overheat, but they don't know, and until they do, Blue Watch is on full alert. Go ahead, Scotty. Yeah, there's a cop car here. Doesn't look like it's on fire. Stop the overheating or something. I understand all the things going How you going? You alright? What? How you going? Better Mills. What? What are you going? Yeah. Hello. How are you going? My car is broken. It's broken? Sorry? Was it fire? Smoke? Uh, yeah, smoke. What was it? Steam? Uh, 
Why don't we pop the bonnet? Do you, this, shut down. I don't know. Do you know how to open the bonnet? Do you know how to open the top of the I engine cover? No, you, you no neither do I. You got me fool. Harry! Smell it? Yep. Can you smell that? It's always dangerous working on the side of the motorway. Peter's keen to clear the car away as soon as he can. Yeah. When was the last time you had work done on it? Uh, at 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock this morning you had a mechanic working on it? Yeah. What did he do? Huh? What was the job that he had to do? What job? Uh, service on it? Service? Do was yeah. the car service or was it all changed? I don't know, just uh, call my friends come in. Yeah, you have no idea what you're saying here. That was cooked all right. Not a happy side. 40 to 50 percent of car fires, the work has been done on the car, say within the last three months. In this case, the lady said there was somebody working on the car, a mechanic, at uh, eight o'clock this morning. There was something wrong with the car that the mechanic was trying to fix, or the mechanic's done something to the car to cause it to stop. I can't judge. <laughs> My major concern, we know about the constables as well is to uh, get this thing cleared up and out of the road because you can see the traffic slowed down, rubbernecking. We could have an accident out there because of an incident down here. I didn't start from Harwick to City. Then, I, before I drive, I checked the audio, uh, petrol, I checked the water, I checked the oil, but the set the smoke. I don't know why. The motor is very tired and it'll uh, probably, I'm not a mechanic, but by what I've seen, it'll take a lot of work to get it going again. Oh. Now what we need now is a tow truck and he will come along and lift the front of the car up wow. and take it away, take it to where you want to take it, maybe your friend can discuss that with you where it's best to go yeah, yeah. and then that's it. It's up to you to try and fix the motor or get somebody to fix the motor and you're nodding your head as though you're understanding me reasonably well. <laughs> so what we're going to do now we are going to go. We'll leave you to it, all right? Leave you alone. Leave you alone? Oh, you're okay, aren't you? Because the constable will stay here. Yeah. He'll, he'll look after you until your friend arrives, and then the tow, tow truck will come, take you away, and then unfortunately you're going to have to find out what's wrong with your motor. Thank you. Okie dokie. Yeah. We'll see you again. Bye-bye. 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 It's been a public relations exercise for Peter and his crew, but that's part of the job. Not every day has drama but some days do. Next morning starts off quietly for Blue Watch. They don't know what the day is going to bring, but they're happy with that as long as it brings breakfast. Put a cornflakes and raisins, apples. <laughs> Pretty basic today. <clears throat> no, nothing fresh today. Harry and Morgan think they'll be teaching fire safety to some elderly people this morning. But that's not going to happen as the first call out comes in. It's an emergency involving a runaway truck. What are we up to? Truck. Yeah, rubbish truck? Yeah. Down there looks like this. White rubbish truck here, by the limit. Yeah, and a gas leak, that's it. And a gas leak, yeah. Yep. Right. You're going to tell us something? There's one of these trucks. Yeah. It's been parked up here. Yeah. It hasn't been parked properly. You can just see the front of it there. Yeah. So the truck just run freely. Yeah. Taking out that power pole. Yeah. And there's a smell of gas down there. Okay. The Remuera Blue Watch firefighters have been called out to an unusual emergency. A runaway truck has ploughed into two houses, narrowly missing occupants. It's caused substantial damage and there's a smell of gas. Now, now you're worried about the gas, are you? What gas do we smell? Just, just calm down, just, just take it down. Yeah, that's okay. It's all, yeah, it's gonna get, it's, it's gonna get better. It's gonna get better. Okay. This is my garden. More yeah, upset about the there. garden. Look okay, now you smell some gas. Yeah, Where's the gas? Well, the gas meter is right on the other side of that chimney. Oh, right yeah. Right underneath the truck. Yeah. Just stay there and I'll get yeah. back to you in about two secs, okay? Okay. okay. 
you can actually hear gas or something running. The truck has torn a gas line as it careered into the house. See that? That's, so, that's solved that problem. I should have breathing apparatus on, but that gas is going straight up. So I've just turned the gas off. So we're sitting at home having afternoon tea okay. and um, we heard a crash of thunder and shattering glass and the whole house shook and um, the children screamed and we jumped up and ran and ran into Peter's room and there was a truck. Looking as though it smashed right through Peter's room into the neighbour's property and taken out most of our front yard on the way. A backup crew turns up. As senior station officer of the first truck to arrive, Peter has overall command. Sean! Pete! We have one vehicle into two houses. The two station officers work together. Their job's to identify fire hazards and any potential risks to life and property. It'll probably take about another hour, I'd say, to really get that truck out of here. It's going to be quite tricky to uh, pull it out. After we've done that, we will put, be putting salvage sheets up. That's uh, big sheets of canvas over the properties to protect the uh, inside of the property. We've got every man in the storm coming at the moment at the gas company, the electricity company, the insurance guys, the council. So I said they've had their little, little meeting. And uh, we can actually get in there, get the truck out, and start, uh, start doing a bit of salvage. As Blue Watch finishes securing the accident scene, one of the homeowners returns. A truck has driven through my house. No, uh, at the moment I'm about to be on national news, and I just need, an, uh, I need someone to come out and assess us from electrical. It'll be a great party talking point, I'm sure, in the future, this time when the trucks came and smashed our house. So you get a lot of mileage out of this on parties. Yeah. I just, I've got to just go and check to see... I've got, a, I've got an electrician coming. Oh, good show. That's good. So, well, he's, he's doing his best to get yeah. someone here now. Yeah, yeah. And their assessor's got someone coming to, to sort out their power. Yeah, just situation. to check it. Yeah. yeah. So I think we've got that covered. Yep. Such. Everything's um, starting to fall together. The concern is they haven't picked up our waste, so... <laughs> yeah, but they've delivered a truck to you. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, that guy seemed pretty calm. I think I would have been uh, looking for the driver of the vehicle and uh, given him a piece of my mind, but, uh, you yeah, know, I probably would have been a bit upset. Blue Watch is only just clear of that incident when they're called as backup to a house fire in Onihonga, one of over a thousand house fires in Auckland every year. Could be a cooking fire, could be something more serious. See the windows? <laughs> The fire's out, but the smoke's not. The house is full. Let's stoke this thing up. Fire in a bedroom. Got the generator going and pushing, pushing air in. Obviously, the window, with the window open, you're getting a bit of the smoke coming out. It's called positive pressure ventilation. The tenant is lucky to be alive. I, was, I still sleep. I, was, I, feel, I, I can't breathe. Yeah? Yeah. And I wake up. That was lucky. Wake up and look. I uh, can't see to the other side. Yeah. Did the um, oven was a fire. I don't know what, what a fire come from, but. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you smoke, Sam? Yeah, I smoke, yep. but uh, I have a, a pocket part. Only one I open. Yeah. Open this morning. Yeah. I can't smoke. I'm not smoking last night. I'd suggest that you get hold of your landlord, give him a quick ring, and <coughs> it's, his, it's his hassle now is to sort things out and get the thing refurbished, clean the place up, and maybe repaint it all. Go ahead, Sean. Did you notice a smoke alarm when you came in? No, actually, I didn't. Uh, where bits is it? Come on in, I'll show you. Okay, ta. I'll leave you for a sec, eh? Thanks for that. What have we got, Sean? Well, smoke alarm, as you can see. Yeah. Not hardwired. No. Battery's been taken out. Well, 
Not much you can say about that. There are cigarette butts lying around the kitchen. I mean, it's obviously been burning up around on yeah. top of the stove there um, because of the, um, the pattern, but I'm thinking cigarette and a, and a rubbish bag. They can't be sure yet what's caused the fire, but all the evidence points to a cigarette butt near the rubbish. The next job is to ensure that any hot spots don't reignite, and that means cleaning up. Thanks, Yoni. Nice meeting you. Yep. Pretty it was like this, though, eh? Just shows you the old, old smoke detectors need to have the batteries in. So maybe you should have one of your own. Get, grab one of your own if you move around. Just make sure you look after the smoke detector. It'll look after you. See you later, mate. Yeah, thank you. See you, Pete. It's an unnecessary fire. If the smoke detector had been there, we would have detected the fire before, but the, uh, the cause of the fire is preventable. The fire didn't need to happen, but even, either with or without the smoke detector. It's just a matter of um, awareness. Later in the day, Blue Watch returns to the scene of the runaway truck. The truck's gone, but repairs to the houses will take months. What's your name, son? Andrew. Andrew. Thanks, Andrew. That's good. Well, thank you so much for Friday. You just made it so much easier for me. It felt so much better when you got to yeah. it. It's wonderful. Oh, it's good we have that effect. Oh, very calming. Well, <laughs> that's uh, half our job, you know, to try and make some sort of order out of what's apparently chaos. Yep. And we right. get uh, people throwing job. things at us, you know, from this one, this one, oh, this, that, and the other thing. We've got to suss it all out and yep. calm the people down. Yep. And you calm down very quickly, about 30 seconds, and she was very good, and she was... Well, just took a couple, apparently. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> this return visit by Blue Watch is appreciated. Not so much by Harry, however. Oh, dirty my boots, mate. I'll have to give them a good polish when I get home. See, so we'll just go home and have some tea now. Oh, good on you. Well, anyway, thank you very see much again. On of okay. Thank you very much. Thank All right. you. Bye now. Bye. Bye bye. The most satisfying parts of the job for me to be out on the road and to be helping people, to be part of the answer rather than part of the problem. Next week on Firefighters, Korea firefighters perform a difficult rescue in a smoke-filled sewer. And a smoker discovers that cigarettes are more than just bad for your health. I was crying and screaming of pain and the man was saying, calm down, calm down. I was saying, please, there's a fire at the back here, can you hurry? And he was like, calm down, calm down.